Hello, thank you all for attending today's live Q&A about phase two of the Artificial Kidney Prize. My name is Sarah Lickner. I'm a vice president at NextSite Group. Today, we'll be introducing you to Kidney X and the Artificial Kidney Prize phase two and moderating a live Q&A to help you understand the competition and ensure you're ready to submit an application should you choose to do so. For those of you who are new to Kidney X, I'll start with some background. Kidney X, or the Kidney Innovation Accelerator, is a partnership between the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the American Society of Nephrology. The organizations formed Kidney X in 2018 in an effort to encourage necessary innovation in the treatment, diagnosis, and prevention of kidney diseases. Today, 37 million Americans have kidney diseases, as do 850 million people from around the world. Through targeted prize competitions, Kidney X seeks to accelerate the development of continuous kidney replacement therapies and find transformational treatment options beyond dialysis and traditional transplants. To get us started, we're going to be sharing a couple of videos about the prize competition. Hello, and thank you for joining us. I am honored as the Assistant Secretary for Health at the United States Department of Health and Human Services to speak with you today. We are thrilled to join our esteemed partners at the American Society of Nephrology to launch Phase 2 of the incredibly important Kidney X Artificial Kidney Prize. Kidney disease is very serious, with 37 million Americans affected at a cost of more than $100 billion per year in the United States alone. Current treatment methods have not significantly changed in more than 60 years, though. The best treatment for kidney failure is transplantation, but the supply of organs addresses only a small fraction of the need. Those on dialysis face a 50% mortality rate within the first five years of treatment. Communities of color are disproportionately affected. While black or African Americans make up about 13.5% of the population, they make up more than 35% of dialysis patients. This is unacceptable and a prime example of the important work at hand. Because of its importance, the Biden-Harris administration created Executive Order 13985, ensuring that government works better for all Americans. We have more work to do to ensure that all communities that HHS serves have the opportunity to access and experience optimal health and well-being. Ensuring a healthier future for all people living in the United States is a priority of Secretary Becerra and a priority of mine. The HHS Equity Action Plan is a vital step towards fulfilling this mission. We are very hopeful that Phase 2's focus on the integration and advancement of artificial kidney prototypes will result in breakthroughs that ensure a healthier future and includes eliminating health disparities. We look forward to seeing the hard work of the interested entrants provide innovation and acceleration toward a much needed solution for kidney disease. My name is John Cedar, and it's my honor to tell you about the Artificial Kidney Prize Phase 2 recently launched by Kidney X. I'm a physician in the Department of Kidney Medicine at the Cleveland Clinic and honored to be chair of the Kidney X Steering Committee. 37 million people in the U.S. have kidney disease. Almost 40% of U.S. adults over age 65 are living with chronic kidney disease. Kidney diseases are the eighth leading cause of death in the United States. The take home message is kidney diseases are common, they are serious, and they are constantly costly. Not only in the economic burdens levied on the healthcare delivery system, but more importantly, in the toll kidney diseases and their current treatments extract from kidney disease patients, both in terms of poor health and limited capability to follow their aspiration. Patients tell us the care as usual is not tenable, and there's an enormous opportunity to translate advances in science and technology, similar to what's occurred in oncology and cardiology, into innovations that improve the lives of people with kidney diseases. I'm involved with Kidney X because Kidney X is an important
important cog in the enterprise to achieve these goals for the patients that I see every day. But simply put, we want to de-risk innovation. We want to move products to the market that will help our patients. And KDX uses prize competitions as our tool to meet this goal. I'm Elazar Elman, and I'm honored to be a part of the steering committee of Kidney X. This is important to me. It's important because as a acute intensive care unit cardiologist at Harvard Medical School and the Brigham and Women's Hospital, I treat people with kidney disease. As a director of MIT's Institute for Medical Engineering and Science, I investigate kidney disease. But really, I speak to you as someone whose family has been beset by all the frustrations and tragedies of kidney disease. And so the bioartificial kidney is important to me. Regenerative medicine, cell and tissue engineering, synthetic and systems biology has offered so much to an array of patients and clinicians. New materials, new devices, new concepts in how we deal with organ and cell transplantation. And now we'd like to do the same for kidney diseases. Phase two will devote $10.5 million in two tracks. The first track to those who have devoted their lives to bioartificial kidney research. And the second to those who we want to attract to the field. Track one, which we've labeled accelerating the prototype of a bioartificial kidney, is directed to those who have a clear-cut mark, demarcated milestones to advancing to first in human trials. Track two is for those who possess ideas, concepts, know-how, materials, components, and tools that will enable that march to succeed and progress at a better pace. Regenerative medicine has great potential, but above all, as one whose family suffers from this disease, it offers great hope. And we hope you will take advantage of this prize to come together with our community to address the community of people who suffer from kidney diseases. Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa. I am a 25 year dialysis veteran. I am excited about the future and I am excited about innovations that can allow me to live a life untethered. That would mean that uh, I don't connect to a machine daily. That would mean that I don't have to take a machine with me when I travel to go on vacation or for work. That would mean that I don't need to accept supplies here at my house. Any kind of innovation, I think, needs to be sure that it's safe and that it's reliable before we actually go out and work with the patient community. When you consider doing a new innovation, consider asking not only the patients, but their families, and perhaps even putting together what we call a PAB, a patient advisory board, where you have a group of dedicated patients and their care partners they really want to listen and help you understand what is the patient thinking, how is that going to affect the family, and kind of all the challenges and barriers that they might perceive that you as an innovator really just might not think about. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. I know you can do this and we're ready and waiting for you. Kidney X is audacious. We're looking for paradigm shifting approaches to treatment and management of advanced kidney diseases, which in AKP2 will use tools of regenerative medicine, systems biology, synthetic biology, and cellular engineering. We are hoping to see solutions that we have not even conceived of. As Eleazar told you, Track 1 is looking for solutions that will accelerate generation of an artificial kidney prototype. What we're really interested in that we will have proposed solutions that achieve critical kidney disease function safely and continuously. We're hoping that the submissions demonstrate novel applications of regenerative medicine, cellular engineering, systems biology, and synthetic biology sciences that will help in the development of a functional 
prototype bioartificial kidney. Of course, the application should include feasibility and proof of concept data, which demonstrate the solution will make meaningful advances towards a bioartificial kidney that can be tested in animals, move to first in human studies, and ultimately clinical trials. Patient input in your application is critical and should be actively sought. Applications should also describe future critical milestones, timelines, and collaborations. Attract who is similar, but is specifically seeking components or tools that will enable the development of an artificial kidney. The submission should identify a barrier in the development of an artificial kidney platform and describe how an enabling tool or solution created using the domains of science I've already outlined will overcome this challenge. Similar to phase one judging criteria, the application should include feasibility and proof of concept data that demonstrate that a functional component will be developed. Non-U.S. citizens or residents or non-U.S. incorporated entities or places of business are eligible to apply and may be eligible for certain monetary prizes. Uh, we are encouraging applications from everywhere. We need to work together to transform treatment of kidney diseases. By submitting your innovation to AKP2, you are helping advance kidney medicine and achieve an improved quality of life for the 850 million people worldwide and 37 million Americans living with kidney diseases. For full competition rules, regulation, and judging criteria, go to kidneyx.org backslash AKP. As you heard in our videos, Kidney X recently launched phase two of the Artificial Kidney Prize, which is focused on encouraging innovations from the fields of regenerative medicine, cellular and tissue engineering, systems and synthetic biology, and of course, nephrology. Phase two will award up to $10.5 million in prizes to as many as nine winners across two tracks of innovation. As you heard in the videos, Track one, accelerating the prototype of a bioartificial kidney is open to applicants with a clear path to first in human trials for a prototype bioartificial kidney. These applicants should have proven effectiveness, reliability, and functionality of their prototype and should have a clear plan for patient engagement and first in human trials. Up to three applicants to track one will receive up to $1.5 million each and the deadline for track one submissions is October 28th. Track two, components and tools that enable the development of an artificial kidney is open to applicants who have ideas or innovations for a tool or component that can help advance development of an artificial kidney or solve a problem hindering the development of an artificial kidney. Track two applicants do not need to have previous experience working in nephrology. These applicants are likely to come from fields such as regenerative medicine, cellular engineering, systems biology, or other areas outside of nephrology. Up to six applicants to track two will receive up to $1 million each, and the deadline for track two submissions is January 28th of 2023. Today, I'm joined by four panelists who will be helping to answer questions during our Q&A today. I'll ask that each of the panelists introduce themselves and their connection to Kidney X. Uh, John, can we please start with you? Sure. <clears throat> My name is John Cedar. I'm a nephrologist, a physician scientist. I'm at the Cleveland Clinic in the Department of Kidney Medicine, and I'm chair of the Kidney X Steering Committee. Thank you. And Mark? Uh, my name is Mark Lim. I'm a vice president of research discovery and innovation over at the American Society of Nephrology. It includes Kidney X, the Kidney Health Initiative, as well as Kidney Cure. Thank you. Ben? Good morning. I'm Ben Eloff. I'm the Director of Innovation Management uh, within the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Health at the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, I, uh, I'm working on Kidney X prizes uh, for since uh, uh, redesigned dialysis uh, prize competitions. 
Um, I have a personal interest in, in uh, uh, the Kidney X Prizes, and I am also serving as the federal challenge manager for Artificial Kidney Prize Phase 2. I'd also like to introduce uh, one of our steering committee members, uh, Emily Levy. Hi, everybody. I'm a volunteer for ASN. I serve on the steering committee of Kidney X. I've been a judge on all the prizes, and I serve on the ASN and Kidney Care Investment Committee. My career covered uh, business development, marketing, in Genzyme and Abbott Diagnostics, and I've been an investor for a Partners Healthcare Treasury Direct Venture effort, and I most recently was the global head of Fresenius Medical Care Ventures. For disclosure, I currently serve as a startup for uh, as an advisor to two startups, Cluster Bio and Laura Health, and I'm on the Life Science Council for Springboard Enterprises. Perfect. Thank you all, and we really appreciate your contributions serving on our panel today. So now we're going to go through and answer questions about phase two of the artificial kidney prize with an attention toward track one of this prize. We will, however, be answering questions that will apply to both track one and track two applicants. The questions that we'll be answering today are a mix of frequently asked questions from past prize competitions, questions that were submitted to Kidney X ahead of today's event and questions that we'll be receiving live during this presentation. If you have any particular questions that, that you'd like answered, please type those in the Q&A as part of the Zoom, and we will be doing our best to ensure that all questions are answered. Please note this Q&A is being recorded. The video and transcript of the session will be available via kidneyx.org following uh, today's live event. So we'll get started here with some of our questions. Um, we have some general questions uh, about the prize competition. Uh, ben, we'll start with you. The first question is, how many prizes are there for phase two and how will they be distributed? So for phase two, we have uh, uh, two sets of prizes, the two categories. Um, and we have ten and a half million dollars uh, to split between those prizes. Uh, the exact distribution of our planned uh, uh, awards, should we receive enough uh, uh, qualifying applications that are of high, high quality, um, the exact dis distribution is on the uh, uh, prize announcement, uh, which can be found through a, a link from the kidneyx.org website uh, or specifically uh, on the challenge.gov website, just search for kidney X. Thank you. And another question for you, Ben, how is this competition different from past kidney X prizes? And how is the artificial kidney prize different from other HHS grants? So the Kidney X Prize Program, this is now the sixth prize that we have uh, run. The first two uh, were, were redesigned dial dialysis, which were specifically around how to uh, uh, bring new innovations to improve dialysis care um, for patients in, in clinic. Um, we had it also a patient innovator prize and a COVID-19 uh, 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 innovation prize uh, that were smaller scale, um, but intended to really jumpstart and, and get ideas from uh, uh, people who were working at the uh, uh, grassroots, at the ground level with direct uh, information uh, uh, and, and ideas on how to improve care. The Artificial Kidney Prize, uh, both phase one and phase two, are were, were developed with the plan to accelerate the development of an a totally artificial kidney. Um, one with a goal of, of being in human trials in 2024. Um, the phase two builds upon phase one, uh, which was the phase one was, was for early uh, ideas. Um, and now phase two, we're looking at how those ideas can be implemented um, and how we can uh, really move forward into 
uh, uh, integration and, and clinical uh, utility of, and, and eventually trials of uh, new artificial kidneys. The second part of this, how are prizes different from grants? Um, is a very long conversation, uh, but I can uh, uh, make it shorter. Um, a, a prize award is done under the authority of the America Competes Act. Um, and prizes are, are given after work has been done. You're paying for uh, uh, the, the solution. Um, whereas a, a grant uh, is an assistance mechanism where the federal government agrees that, that um, the work that, that a grantee is doing uh, or an applicant is doing is, is um, aligned with their program and uh, uh, of, of a uh, good public good. For those who are part of, of universities, um, there may be uh, some additional details that you have to work out with your sponsored research offices or other uh, financial offices to understand how uh, uh, the overhead may or may not apply because it is different than uh, for a grant. Thank you. So our next question is for John. Uh, which track of the competition should I apply to? And I, I think between John and Mark, there's a couple of follow-up questions we have to that based on some of the Q&A that has come in uh, so far. But, but John, do you want to get us started? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. You know, we, we specifically have two tracks here. And let me start with track two first because uh, I can then contrast it to track one. With track two, we're looking for... Uh, solutions, ideas that address a uh, specific barrier that's prevented the development of uh, artificial kidney and innovation in uh, kidney replacement therapies. Uh, we're predominantly interested in the tools that we've been talking about, which are biological tools of regenerative medicine, um, cellular engineering, we're also interested in applications that include synthetic biology to try and expand the scope of the ideas that have been coming to kidney X since the beginning of our prize competitions, which initially focused predominantly on technological solutions. Um, the things that we're expecting in track two are going to be maybe standalone things that ultimately would work with other teams to come together to put together an artificial kidney. Track one, we really is the moonshot in, in a lot of ways uh, to steal from the cancer field. And they, we're looking for groups here that have ideas that would ultimately turn into a functional uh, bioartificial kidney with a fairly clear timeline to first in human trials. Um, I think you know, there's a number of uh, questions in the chat about the scope of technologies that we would welcome, and I'll, I'll let Mark um, answer those. Yes, yeah, so, so we have a couple of questions that are asking kind of similar things, and I might just be repeating a lot with what Dr. Cedar mentioned, but <clears throat> this is looking primarily at the bio uh, cellular type of solutions. If you have one where you're developing the whole artificial kidney composed completely of cellular uh, materials, whether you know it's coming from regenerative medicine, cellular engineering, and those that, that are mentioned earlier, that's where we encourage you to go to track one. Now for, for track two, if you've been developing uh, artificial kidneys, wearable, implantables, other kind of formats, um, but you need, you know, there may be one hurdle in which there is a, a cell-based solution, um, whether you've been wanting to partner with a group that's, been, that's where track two is perfect for you. You're looking at a specific component, not looking at, at developing whole prototype. So if, if you're looking at developing components, enabling tools based out of, again, from those communities, uh, that for any of the type of platforms, that's perfect for track one, for track two. That's the one that, that runs through uh, next year. If you're developing a whole 
artif bio artificial kidney, then track one is, is for you. Um, so, you know, we have questions about components, um, real time monitoring, et cetera. Uh, those would be where you might want to consider track two uh, and looking for partners. Uh, again, for track two, it's even if you're developing a cellular component, you must be explicit in explaining what is the challenge that other artificial kidney developers are facing. Um, you, you can't just have a component without context of, you know, how are you addressing it? Because it is an enabling tool that we're looking for. And Mark, could you help answer how you would define an artificial kidney? There's a couple of questions that we've been getting here as well. Are are wearables included in, in what we're considering in that definition? Yeah, if, if you can address it from a wearable component, but again, what we're looking for is the community that's developing it. So if it is a wearable where the effort that you're going through is from the regenerative medicine, cellular engineering, uh, synthetic biology, systems biology, community, and that's the solution, then you know we're open to that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be an implanted. Um, solution, although, you know, so we'll be keeping a scope on those, but again, it has to be from those communities. That That's what's, uh, those are the communities that we're looking for. Good. Thank you. Any other comments on this from our other panelists? Yeah, I think, I think one thing I'd like to emphasize is um, we're uh, within the limits that Mark just discussed and I did earlier, we're really open to ideas. We, we don't want to limit ideas. As we said in the opening video, we, we're hoping people are going to come up with ideas that we haven't even considered. So uh, keep that in mind as you uh, think about your applications for this prize. Good, thank you. So as we move on to a few questions that are tied to eligibility, um, can previous winners of the Kidney X of Kidney X prizes enter and win this competition? I'll I'll take this one. This is Ben Eloff. Um, absolutely, uh, you're encouraged to uh, uh, apply. Please do. Um, we've actually uh, uh, seen several of our our prior winners um, uh, apply to subsequent uh, uh, app prizes and, and be successful. Um, we also have new uh, uh, people in, in, in the field uh, come into each prize competition uh, and, and people who have not applied uh, before or you know much less uh, uh, won a, a kidney pre kidney X prize competition before. Um, all are are encouraged and eligible to apply that uh, there's very very few eligibility restrictions for uh, uh, applying for for this prize thank you ben and then um for mark do i need to have submitted a phase one application to participate in phase two yeah, not at all uh, again you know particularly you know we're looking for uh, as uh, dr cedar mentioned new ideas as well so we, we do invite folks even from outside of the kidney community. Um, you know, track two is probably where you'd want to look at, you know, for those for those opportunities, unless you already have an idea for developing the fully kind of bioartificial kidney. Another eligibility question, can non-US citizens participate in the prize competition? Uh, question for Mark. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, we we're looking uh, at both U.S. citizens, uh, that includes organizations and entities, as well as individuals. And can businesses or other organizations enter and win, or can you only uh, submit a, as part of an indiv as an individual? Uh, both. Um, if if uh, there's a, a business, organization, team, individual, uh, any of those uh, uh, structures are are eligible to enter. Um, in terms of something as complex as an artificial kidney, uh, one one would assume that that there would be a a, a team uh, involved, and and we of course encourage teams, but. Uh, individual geniuses who are, are capable of doing this are uh, 
strongly encouraged uh, and, and, and welcomed to advance the science of, of the artificial kidney. Good, and we have a couple other questions that have come in um, in real time here that, that relate to the, the overall scope here. Um, one being, it is extremely important to clearly hear whether hard technology ex is excluded and only bio-based solutions are eligible. Can, can one of our panel members comment on that? Sure, I'd, I'd like to take this one. Um, as Dr. Cedar mentioned in, in his comments to a, a previous question, uh, some of our, uh, we received feedback on uh, earlier prizes, including uh, phase one of the artificial kidney prize that it appeared to uh, exclude or, or downplay uh, cellular based or cellular included uh, uh, artificial biology and what have you. So in artificial kidney phase two, we uh, uh, included that language more strongly. Uh, this is not to uh, uh, exclude, downplay, uh, de-emphasize or anything uh, uh, purely technological uh, uh, based solutions. Uh, again, as, as Dr. Cedar mentioned uh, uh, several times, both in the intro video uh, and, and elsewhere, and, and we can't stress enough as, as a team, the purpose of, of running a prize competition is for uh, uh, entrants to come up with something we haven't thought of before. Um, so in terms of, of scope and solution, we are, we are wide open. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, ensure that there is a, an artificial kidney uh, that is available uh, to, to patients at, at the end of this prize. Um, we'd like to make it happen sooner than it has uh, uh, currently been, been uh, uh, on track. Thank you. Any other panelists want to make a comment on this particular question? I can add that um, for those folks who have been working on the artificial kidneys, the phase one prize really focused on sort of the toxin removal and equilibrium balance of electrolytes and similar. And we got some great ideas there. I think here we're also trying to make sure that the endocrine functions of the kidney aren't missed and that in a true artificial kidney, you know, you need that, that side of the equation needs to get emphasized. So there's, there's a, there's more to think about um, in that regard. Thank you, Emily. So our next question here is for John, where can I learn more about current technical or scientific needs in kidney replacement therapy? or how the kidney functions, which, which feeds well from our, our previous discussion about endocrine function? It's a great question. Um, I, and the answer is right there in green on the slide. It's a link to the technology roadmap for innovative approaches to renal replacement therapy, which was a, a, a product of a work group that the Kidney Health Initiative put together uh, and has been updated uh, inter intermittently, it, uh, if you go to either the kidneyx.org website or HHX websites, there's links to this resource as well as other resources to uh, understand better about the technical and scientific needs for kidney replacement therapy. Thank you, John. And our, our next question is for... Uh, I believe John and Emily, what kind of proof of concept results are you looking for? And would animal test results be considered? Emily, you wanna go or you want me to start? Um, I, I can start, John. So I think the answer to this varies depending on where you are. I think showing for people who have a prototype, you know, we wanna understand what proof of concept that prototype has achieved if you have animal data, that's great. 
Um, if you have a clear path to getting there, that's also going to be pretty important. But I, the proof of concept really relates to where you are in development. Um, certainly any good data for those in, in track two who are coming from other organ studies or other science and want to try and tap into helping the kidney community, what actual hard data can you present that helps support your hypothesis? John? I, I, I don't have much, much to add. It, it's not going to be enough to say, you know, our technology is ready or use a technology ready in a scale about and say I'm at level X. You know, we're, we're going to want to see the data that supports what you're, you're saying. I can stop there. I think Emily answered it well. Good. Thank you, Bill. Our next question here for Emily is, what guidelines do you have or suggest for structuring our future timeline toward first in human studies? So again, I want to tie back to the stage of development. If you've already done pig studies, um, we're going to be looking to see that you're really understanding all the complexity of your first meeting with the FDA and what it's going to take to get there. If you're very early and you've just done your first bench experiment, there's a lot of unknowns before you get to that first in human milestone. We want to see that you understand the right way to develop with your quality systems, with all the other aspects of developing a good product, that you understand the steps that are coming and have the, the right team to be able to get there. But if you don't have the exact timeline to get to first in human, that's okay. We don't, we don't want you to try and push what you don't have. We just want to see a really good product development plan to move you forward in that direction and that you understand what would be required. Good. Thank you. Another question for you, Emily. What are the opportunities and or gaps in this market right now? So a lot of this market information is in the Kidney X um, background material. You know, certainly the patient size, the size of the market, where these patients are. What I think you should focus on in your applications is your particular gap and need and how you fill that well. And what are the issues around your particular solution? So I think you don't need to spend a ton of time on defining the, the larger market that Kidney X and ASN have done a really good job of doing. And, and certainly some of the phase one applicants have done a great job at this part, but really zero in on where your innovation will fill specific market issues and show us that you understand how you're going to think through to commercialize that opportunity, not just develop the science. Good. Thank you very much for, for your answers to those questions. So we have a couple of questions that are specific to the judging criteria, and, and Ben will give this first question to you. Who are the judges for phase two of the Artificial Kidney Prize? That's an excellent question. Uh, uh, I mean, the judges that, that we have used in all of our uh, previous uh, uh, competitions uh, have of course, been non-conflicted uh, and, and uh, are subject to non-disclosure agreements. Um, they're generally people who uh, uh, understand the, the field uh, deeply in, in a variety of uh, uh, different sets of uh, different pieces of the field. Uh, for example, the business development in addition to the science, the engineering, uh, you know, the clinical characteristics, what a patient may uh, include. Um, the specific judges, a, a judging panel um, will be listed on the uh, Kidney X website. Thank you very much. And Emily, what are the judges looking for and how will my research be evaluated? So I think the best way to put this, and it's a great question, is showing that you understand the commercialization path, not just the path to develop more data and science. And so we, we 
have looked at some very, very early stage ideas that did a fantastic job of really showing the first couple of steps that they will take and understanding how far they are along that process, especially if you're collaborating with others. Again, showing that you understand all of the steps that need to be achieved to commercialize this technology and the data you're looking for and why that plan makes sense, I think is going to be pretty important. Mark, I don't know if you want to throw more in on that. Yeah, I, I think that's it's, it's that that's very important uh, for us. I, I think even if you don't have partners that you're coming into uh, with your submission, describing the types of partners you'll need to be successful is important. Now, for track one, it's very important to have patient input, uh, and this isn't this is uh, as Vanessa mentioned in the video. You know, an active patient advisory board that's constantly advising, providing, you know, feedback on design criteria, et cetera. Um, and performance. And so that's something we'll be looking for, particularly for track one. If you don't have patients involved, you know, you have to at least explain how you plan on, you know, setting up something like a patient advisory board and how they'll be advising the development and the design. Uh, so track number one, you'll see it, it's patient input is required. Uh, track number two, we, we understand that um, you may be bringing in folks that are new to the kidney space. We, we don't, I would say we don't require that patient input uh, is part of it, but, you know, it's still highly um, encouraged. Um, again, um, back to Emily's point, um, you know, a path to commercialization should include patient input regardless. And even if you don't have it, you know, even right now as part of the submission, at least showing that you have plans uh, to engage any type of partner. Um, Emily, I, I think you wanted to add one more thing. So the other thing is that if you were a phase one or even a disrupting dialysis winner, it helps to show how you've progressed since your prize and be really clear on your record of accomplishments. And I'd say the same thing for track two, people who are new to the area, it would help the judges to see that you have progressed the technology along the way so that they understand your ability as a team or even an individual to actually deliver on the milestones that you said you could do. So I would encourage people to take a little bit of time. I know these applications are short and very concise, but I'd encourage you to take a little bit of time to show that track record, show how the technology is advanced, um, but then again, be really clear commercially how this is gonna move forward. Good, thank you very much, both of you. Um, so building off some of that discussion we've just had, uh, we have a few questions that, that focus on collaboration. And so this first one is a, a question from Mark. How can I connect with others interested in this topic to possibly form a team? Yeah, the KidneyX website does have what we call the solver community. Um, right now, it's currently a spreadsheet that we're developing and we'll be sharing for others. So, you know, we, we want you to be specific in terms of what you bring to the table, as well as what types of teams you're looking for, and we'll try our best uh, to, you know, at least uh, make sure you're able to connect with them. Uh, obviously, you're looking through the literature, looking online, seeing who's doing what, and reaching out directly is always the best approach. Um, you know, forced marriage is never, <laughs> at least from a team concept, a uh, teaming concept, you know, rarely works. So it is important to to really reach out and see who's doing what, uh, and seeing what you can bring to their teams or um, you know, or, or being able to actually, you know, we, we have the list of the past winners that are on a website, but, you know, but we know there's um, a, a lot of groups that are out there thinking about this and, and literature, whether it's on PubMed or others, you know, is pretty rich. Uh, John, do you have any recommendations for folks? No, I, I think that's, you know, uh, a, a perfect approach. We're going to try and provide information that will help you uh, identify by people and, uh, Looking at the past winners and uh, you know the literature is is probably the best way to go. Thank you. And the, the next question here, uh, Mark, you've touched on a bit already. It's about the involvement of patients. So, can people with kidney diseases who aren't submitting solutions help Kidney X? And I, I think you've already addressed the second part of this question about whether patients need to be engaged before submitting applications. Anything else you'd like to say about patient involvement? 
Yeah, you know, there's there's several patient advocacy organizations that are out there. They're easy to find. Um, I would also, if you're looking for uh, people with lived experiences, whether it's a patient themselves or a care provider, um, I would highly encourage you reaching out to them. They're, they do have uh, folks who are looking to participate in research. So that that's one additional avenue. Um, I think also maybe going you know to to your local. Uh, care facility and seeing if there are patients there that are interested in participating but um, and providing. But I, I think you have to be, uh, you know, what we're really trying to avoid is just having a patient for the sake of having a patient on board uh, or as part of the application. Their contribution has to be pretty crisp in terms of how they're informing the design, the development, the evaluation of, of your innovation, particularly for track one. Good and, and Ben, it looks like. Did you want to comment on also that that looking yeah, for absolutely? Uh, um, you, you know, people uh, uh, living with uh, uh, kidney diseases, um, patients can also participate on uh, with Kidney X uh, more directly as as we seek to fill a, a reviewer roles on, uh, and. And of course, uh, uh, being a part of the KidneyX community uh, to to engage with the, the the developers or help developers engage with with patients is very very useful. Good, thank you. Um, no, I, I just I just before we go on, I might add there's a specific tool that I think is on the KidneyX website that deals with um, human factors engineering and has a number of case-based descriptions to give people an idea of what we're looking for with patient input. And I, I think it's gonna be really critical to understand what people want as you design your solutions so you make sure you're addressing uh, issues that meet market need. Thank you. So a couple of business related questions um, for Emily, <clears throat> excuse me. The prize money from the Artificial Kidney Prize won't fund all of my work. How can I find other investors? So we could spend the whole webinar on this topic, but um, I think the first thing is everyone's got to get out there and network and understand the ecosystem first locally and then in there uh, nationally um, of angel investors, venture philanthropy, venture capital, and potential corporate partners. As you come into the kidney community, you need to start finding out about all those people and networking and talking to fellow members of this community, I think are a great way to do it. Um, small commercial for Kidney Week, come and meet a bunch of people who've been active in the field. But I think it's important for you to be able to articulate in a clear, non-confidential way, what you're trying to do, and then reach out to the participants that are actively funding other companies in this space and do your homework and understand what stage they are willing to invest in. But this is an area that KidneyX is thinking really hard about trying to help people more, but it's, it's really networking and homework are a big part of this. Good, thank you. A related question about funding, is it okay to include other funding sources in the application? Um, we've, in, in previous applications, I think the answer is yes. Um, it's great to see that these ideas are getting support and it also helps potentially focus what you're asking the Kidney X Prize to do for you. So absolutely. I'm going to jump in on that from a, a, a prize policy uh, standpoint. Um, but yes, different sources of, of funding uh, are, are definitely a part of, of this. However, for a, a recipients of, of federal grants, uh, uh, the prize competition 
uh, uh, prize funding cannot be used to uh, uh, pay for the work that was being paid for under the grant. Basically, the federal government does not pay twice for the same work. Thank you. Uh, so our, our next question here is one that came in live through the chat. Um, I thought you mentioned 2024 as the timeline for a clinical trial. Is that a criterion for judging or a recommendation? Can one of our panelists take that question? I did. I, I mentioned that um, the, the 2024, as, as we were developing again, showing the, the history of, of the artificial kidney prize and development. As we were developing it um, prior to the COVID pandemic, we put 2024 as, as our line in the sand. Um, it is definitely an ambitious goal uh, and, and one that, that we'd still like to see achieved. Uh, that being said, um, we realize that it is a, a goal. Uh, it is not a... a um, not a uh, criterion in our judging, uh, and it is definitely not disqualifying if you don't meet that goal. Thank you. Another yeah, maybe, just, maybe just adding to it and bringing what Emily mentioned earlier, <clears throat> if, if you have a goal to get to clinical trials, um, just saying a year, whether it's 2024, 2034, without any context to the full plan, uh, that that you need to include how, what those steps are and the milestones to get to clinical trial. So, you know, definitely don't just say 2024 with, without explaining how you'll get there, because maybe you're ready to get there and, and we don't want to discount that. Uh, but we want you to be realistic because our judges will be looking to see whether you're being realistic as well. Thank you. Another question that came in live uh, through the Q&A, can we apply if our wearable kidney does not include a bio component? Does vascular access count as a bio component? Does one of our panelists want to want to pick that question up? Oh, Emily, do you, I could take that. Um, so, so again, the focus um, uh, is to bring in the regenerative medicine, cellular engineering, and other fields into this space. If you're looking at a component, we highly recommend that we track two. But the solution, whether it's an enabling tool or the prototype as a whole, needs to come from these communities. For track two, you know, vascular access, if, if it has a biological, if, it, if the solution is based out of it, um, then that would be something that, that would, the judges would be able to look at uh, equivocally across the other submissions. Um, but, you know, the, the focus of this one is explicitly on this community, whether you're developing a whole prototype or a component that could be used in, in other, you know, we'll, we'll say artificial kidneys, so that could be wearable, that could be Xeno, that, that can be other formats and other platforms for track two. So we have a couple questions that are related to the, the competition mechanics. And this first question is for Ben. Who owns the intellectual property in Kidney X submissions? Intellectual property uh, uh, is owned by the person, uh, organization, people, uh, however the team decides. Um, what, once the application comes in, uh, uh, you do not transfer any ownership of intellectual property. Uh, what we do ask for is a, a license to the, the submission at, there we go. Uh, um, we, we asked for a, a, a access to the submission so that we can uh, basically uh, um, share who the winners are and uh, uh, at least the public facing abstract um, when, when we make prize announcements. Uh, but other than that, uh, uh, we do not hold an equity interest uh, or, or anything in, in the um, uh, winning prizes. Good. Thank you. So that is the end of our submitted questions. I'd like to give the panelists an opportunity. Are there final words you'd like to leave our attendees with, those that are considering applying for APP phase two? Uh, we'll yeah. start with uh, Mark. Yeah, um, so there's a couple, you know, there's going to be a couple of additional videos that are coming out in outreach efforts between now and the end of phase two. 
uh, we recommend that you reach out to KidneyX at KidneyX at asn-online.org, KidneyX at asn-online.org um, to not only ask questions, because we'll continue to update our responses on the website through frequently, frequently asked questions, um, as well as uh, we'll be releasing a couple of other videos um, that just provide kind of the patient perspective and others. Um, so you'll want to join our newsletter. Again, you could ask directly questions. All our answers will be going through our, our frequently asked questions uh, portion of the website. Good. John, Emily, Ben, would you like to make any final final words? Yeah, I, I, I would just like to encourage people to apply. You know, we're really not trying to put up barriers. Um, I think you heard in the introductory video, uh, specifically from Elazar and Vanessa, you know, kidney disease is, is a huge burden. It's under-recognized for reasons that aren't worth going into now and unintended consequences of uh, actions uh, to try and improve things for kidney patients. There's not been much innovation in this space. We really need, we really want, as been, you know, emphasized throughout this, our goal here with our part of, of, of trying to bring innovation into the kidney space is to move products to market to improve the lives of people with kidney disease, their families, and the people that love them. And we're really hoping that we can move things along to accomplish that goal. Uh, I just leave you with the thought, you know, uh, the patients have been leading this effort to try and bring innovation and they're waiting for solutions and they're delighted to work with people to try and get to that end game. Thank you, John. Emily, Ben, any final words from you? John nailed it. <laughs> agree. Um, I am, and, and speaking on behalf of our HHS team and uh, also uh, the, our partners in, in, at the American Society of Nephrology, I'm uh, really excited uh, to be launching the prize, even more excited for the solutions that are proposed and uh, really the, the greatest excitement will be when we can provide an, a viable uh, artificial kidney to patients. Perfect, thank you all. And thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. As a reminder, the session has been recorded, so it will be available soon through the Kidney X uh, website. You can find all the links we shared in the chat, as well as more information and resources about Kidney X and the Artificial Kidney Prize Phase 2 at kidneyx.org. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing your submissions. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thanks again for joining. Take care.